method of accounting for uncollectible accounts. One of the problems that face us with accounts receivable is that sometimes some of the accounts receivable wouldn't be collected. We cannot be sure 100% that all the accounts receivable will be collected on time. That's why we have a loss account which is called bad debt account. This bad debt account is used when accounts receivable will not be received. Then it's a loss because I am waiting to collect my receivable and now it's not going to be received. So this problem happens with accounts receivable. We have two methods to deal with this problem. The first method is direct write-off method. And in this case, we wait until we already know that accounts receivable, part of the accounts receivable will not be collected. And we consider this amount as a loss in a bad debt expense account. It's very simple and easy method, but it's not going with the conservative accounting principle, which requires that we consider any possible losses before it happens. That's why we have the allowance method, the other method. Using the allowance method, we do not wait until we already know that accounts receivable will not be collected. Before we estimate, before I mean before at the, at the very beginning when we create the allowance account, we put an estimation for the amount of accounts receivable that we believe may not be able to collect. Try to estimate this amount and we create an allowance, consider this amount as if it's not collected in advance before the problem happens. And in accounting, we call it conservatism. We consider possible losses before it happens by creating allowances. And this allowance is made for the amount of accounts receivable that I estimate, maybe according to my previous experience, that this amount may not be able to collect. We are going to study the allowance method. The first is how to estimate. Maybe you are given the estimation as a percentage of sales. That's why we call it income statement approach, because you know that sales revenue is in the income statement. And if the, the allowance for uncollectible account is given as a percentage of the sales revenue, the credit sales revenue or sales revenue on account, in this case, we call it the income statement approach. For example, if I tell you that we are having sales revenue on account 500,000, and we estimate that 5% of this sales revenue to be allowance for uncollectible account, so you multiply the 500,000 by 5%, 500,000 times 5 over 100, you get 25,000 as a doubt which means your allowance for uncollectible account will be calculated as 25,000. In other cases, you may be given the allowance as a percentage of accounts receivable. That's why we call it a balance sheet approach, because you know that the accounts receivable found in the balance sheet with the current assets. So if you are given the allowance as a percentage of accounts receivable, we call it a balance sheet approach. For example, you may be given that the accounts receivable value is 150,000 and the allowance for uncollectible account is 10% of this accounts receivable. So you multiply the 150,000 by 10% to get you get 15,000. This will be your allowance. Allowance method. Creating the allowance for doubtful account for the first time. Assume allowance was estimated to be 5% of accounts receivable and accounts receivable had a balance of 300,000. To calculate the estimated allowance for doubtful accounts, 
300,000 multiplied by 5%, we get 15,000. So our amount estimated may be not be able to collect that will be considered as an allowance for doubtful accounts is 15,000. The journal entry prepared when the allowance account is first opened, when it's first created, is debit, bad debt expense, credit, allowance for doubtful account, with this amount estimated, 15,000. By this journal entry, you find that the bad debt expense, debit 15,000, will be one of the expenses in the income statement. We considered this 15,000, which is estimated loss. It's not actual loss that happened, it's just estimation of the loss. This amount was considered as an expense, as if it's actually paid, as if it's actually a loss. In the other side, allowance for doubtful account in the credit side, 15,000, and this will be going to the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, you see the accounts receivable in the current assets minus allowance for doubtful account, you get the net accounts receivable. And you already studied this part in the income statement in the previous lecture. So the amount estimated to be uncollectible will be recorded as debit, bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful account, and this journal entry is prepared when the allowance is first opened for the first time. Now we go to the right of, of accounts receivable. When a debt is actually determined as uncollectible, we write these accounts receivable of. For example, in this illustration, he says that on specific day, one of our customers will not be able to pay his debt of 2000 so we decided to write off his accounts receivable. Now, when part of the accounts receivable is determined to be uncollectible, we already now know that we are not going to collect this 2000 We need to write them off. Write off of accounts receivable means reduction of accounts receivable. We are going to subtract this value from the accounts receivable. And when accounts receivable are reduced, this is done in the credit side. That's why you see the, the journal entry to, re, to write off the accounts receivable. You can see that accounts receivable is credit by 2000. And in the debit side, you see the allowance for doubtful account. You already know from the previous slide that allowance for doubtful account was created as a credit account. When we use from it, when it is reduced, it goes to the debit side. So the journal entry to record the right of, of accounts receivable is prepared when we know for sure now that one of the customers is not going to pay. Now it's not an estimation. No, we know, we know, we know now for sure that the customer is not going to pay. And we decided to write off the accounts receivable. So it will be debit allowance for doubtful account credit accounts receivable. And this journal entry is a reduction for both the accounts receivable and the allowance. If you see in the balance sheet, you can see that the accounts receivable is now recorded as 298,000 instead of 300,000. Subtracted from it, 2,000. And you can see the allowance for doubtful account as 13,000 instead of 15,000 because 2000 was subtracted from the allowance for doubtful account. But you can notice that the accounts receivable net is the same value, it's not changed. Because we already had an allowance of 15. So when we had a problem with the accounts receivable by 2000, we used from our allowance to compensate for the reduction in accounts receivable. And this allowance account would, would be reduced every time, each time we are having a write off for the accounts receivable. Whenever we are having a customer, he's not going to pay, we are sure he's not going to pay, we decide to close his accounts receivable, we are going to reduce the accounts receivable and use from the allowance. So the allowance will be reduced each time we are going to prepare a write off journal entry. 
any writing off for the accounts receivable, you use this entry. Debit allowance for doubtful account, credit accounts receivable by the amount to be written off. Recovered bad debts. What if after we wrote off some of our accounts receivable, we found out that a part of the written off accounts receivable can be collected? Assuming one of our debtors came back after he, he said, I'm not going to pay, and we wrote off his accounts receivable, he came back and said, now I have some money. I can pay part or all of my debt. What shall we do? We need to collect the, our accounts receivable after being written off. In this case, we need to prepare two journal entries. One for recovery of accounts receivable because we already closed the accounts receivable. Now we need to open them again. So one will be recovery of accounts receivable and the other journal entry will be to collect this receivable as cash. When the receivable was first written off, if you look in the previous slide, you can see that the journal entry to write off the accounts receivable was debit allowance for doubtful account and credit accounts receivable. Now to recover the accounts receivable after being written off, you make the opposite. You debit the accounts receivable and you credit the allowance for doubtful account. By this journal entry, you add the value to the accounts receivable again, which was already closed. He says that we have 500 from previously written off accounts receivable were collected later. How to collect 500 of accounts receivable that were already written off? We need to open the receivable again. So we need to make it debit. We already closed the receivable in the credit side in the previous slide. Here we need to reopen it again by making it debit. And this value was taken from the allowance by debiting the allowance. So we are going to return it back to the allowance again by making the allowance credit. So the journal entry to recover accounts receivable that was written off is debit accounts receivable and credit allowance for doubtful account. By this you are adding the 500 recovered to both. You are adding it to the accounts receivable account and to the allowance for doubtful account. And then a journal entry, which is a routine journal entry to collect the receivable. How to collect a receivable? It's debit cash, money collected in cash, by debit cash. And accounts receivable collected will be credit. What you can notice here is that you are having accounts receivable debit by 500 and also credit in the other journal by 500. So there is no effect on the accounts receivable account. We just opened it to close it. We opened it in order to say that it is recovered and no need to remove it from the allowance anymore. And then we close it because we already collected it cash. So if you see the effect on the balance sheet, you find that the accounts receivable is 298,000, the same as the value we had in the previous slide. No change for the accounts receivable. It was opened to be closed. No effect on the accounts receivable. But we are having effect on the allowance for doubtful account. It used to be 14,000. 13,000, sorry, in the previous slide. Now it's 13,500. This 500, which were removed from the allowance before, now it's returned back to the allowance. So the recovery of accounts receivable adds to the allowance. When the accounts receivable is written off, we use from the allowance. We take from the allowance the amount written off. When it is recovered back, we return it back to the allowance. So we have 500 returned back to the allowance. In the previous slide, you can see that the allowance for doubtful account was 13,000. 
Now we are having it as 13,500. Then you subtract the allowance from the accounts receivable, you get the net accounts receivable to be 284,500. At the end of every year, we need to prepare adjusting entry, adjusting journal entry to adjust the amount of allowance by which we are going to start the next coming year. Say that the allowance for the coming year was estimated to be 5% of accounts receivable. You can see from our previous example from the illustration that accounts receivable had a balance of 298,000. 298,000 multiplied by 5%, we get 14,900. That's our estimate for allowance for doubtful accounts. We need our allowance for doubtful account that will appear in our balance sheet subtracted from the accounts receivable for the next coming year to be 14,900. Our balance in allowance for for uncollectible account or allowance for doubtful account, both of them having the same meaning. Allowance for uncollectible account is the same as allowance for doubtful account. The allowance had a balance of 13,500, but we need it to be 14,900. So we have to increase our allowance by the difference. 14,900, which is 5% of the accounts receivable, as mentioned in the illustration, minus 13,500, the balance we already have as allowance, the difference is 1,400. This difference is recorded in an adjusting journal entry at the end of the year, by which we add this 1,400 to our expenses as a bad debt expense and put the 1,400 credit as allowance for doubtful account. By this journal entry, we increased our allowance. Our allowance is now not 13,500. Now it's 14,900. It used to be 13,500, and we added to it 1,400. Now it's, no, now it's 14,900. By this journal entry, we increase the allowance. In this solved example, we can have a better understanding of all what we explained before about bad debts and allowance for doubtful account. Assuming that on date 31 12 2017, we had a balance of accounts receivable by 200,000 and estimated uncollectible account was said to be 5% of accounts receivable. If you multiply 200,000 by 5%, you get 10,000. We need to prepare a journal entry to open the allowance, assuming that the allowance is prepared for the first time. To open the allowance, it's debit, bad debt expense, credit allowance for doubtful account by this 10,000. By this journal entry, you opened an allowance for doubtful account. 5% of your accounts receivable is doubted, maybe not to be collected. So you consider them as, as if they are not going to be collected, so they are considered as expense, debit, bad, debt, expense, as if the loss has happened. But the loss didn't happen, it's just estimation. So we put this value in an allowance for doubtful accounts. And that's opening the allowance. On date 1-1-2018, he says that Massa sold 4,000 units on account at a price of 20 LE. Sales on account, just debit accounts receivable, credit sales, revenue. Multiply 4,000 units by 20. That's, that's a journal entry to record the sales revenue debit accounts receivable and credit sales revenue. And then he says that we collected 20,000 of the receivable. Collecting receivable is debit cash credit accounts receivable by the amount collected 20,000. 
Then we go to the next slide to see the solution of the remaining the remainder of the exercise. You see, he says 6,000 of accounts receivable were written off. You see, he says that 6,000 of the accounts receivable were written off. So we need to prepare the journal entry for writing off the, ac the accounts receivable of 6,000. To write it off, you close the accounts receivable in the credit side. In the debit side, you use this amount from your allowance. You take this amount closed from the accounts receivable. You take it from the allowance. So it's debit allowance for doubtful account, credit accounts receivable by the amount to be written off. That's the journal entry you always prepare whenever you are writing off the accounts receivable. And then he says that 3,000 of these written off accounts receivable now will be collected. So we need to recover this accounts receivable of 3,000. How to recover it back? You make it debit instead of being credit the accounts receivable debit by 3,000 and you return back the value to the allowance. So you put the money back to the allowance because you are recovering the accounts receivable. You notice that the recovery of accounts receivable is opposite to the, the writing off of the accounts receivable. When you wrote off the accounts receivable, it's debit allowance credit accounts receivable. When you recover the accounts receivable, you debit the accounts receivable and you credit the allowance. And then after you recover the accounts receivable, you just collect the receivable cash. You see the two journal entries prepared for recovery and collection by the same 3000, by the same value. The accounts receivable was opened to be closed. In the first one, for recovery, the accounts receivable was debit. And then when collected, the accounts receivable is credit. It was opened to be closed again by collecting it cash. At the end of the year, we had an estimate of 5% of accounts receivable not to be collected. So we need to adjust our allowance for doubtful account to be 5% of our accounts receivable on that date. To start the new coming year, having the allowance for doubtful account with a balance equal to 5% of our accounts receivable. But how much is our accounts receivable on that date? The accounts receivable balance, you can see the calculations. The accounts receivable balance used to be 200,000 at the beginning of the year, then added to it 80,000 when goods were sold on account, and subtracted from it 20,000 when, when accounts receivable were collected, and subtract from it 6,000 which were considered to be written off. What about the 3,000 that were recovered and then collected? No effect on the accounts receivable, as we said before, because it was opened to be closed. So it doesn't have effect on the calculation of the balance of the accounts receivable. We get a balance of 254,000. We need to know how much is 5% of the accounts receivable. 5% of the accounts receivable makes 12,700. So the balance required for allowance for the coming year should be 12,700. How much balance of accounts receivable we, of, of allowance we already have? We had allowance from the beginning of the year by 10,000. And when we wrote off the accounts receivable, this allowance was used from it by 6,000, so 10,000 minus 6,000. And when the, re the, the accounts receivable written off was recovered, the value was added back to the allowance by the amount of 3,000 which were recovered and added back to the allowance. So 10,000 beginning balance of allowance minus 6,000 written off from the allowance plus 3,000 recovered back to the allowance, we get a balance of allowance for doubtful account by 7,000. It's 7,000 now, and we need it to be 12,700. So we need to rise it up by the difference. How much is the difference? 12,700 minus 
7,000, we get 5,700. This is the amount needed to be added to the allowance to start the coming year with allowance balance 5% of accounts receivable, which is 12,700. So you prepare adjusting journal entry to adjust the allowance by the amount of 5,700. The adjusting entry for the allowance will be the same as the one in the, in the very beginning of opening the allowance. Bad debt expense debit, credit allowance for doubtful account. You notice allowance for doubtful account is a credit balance. It's a credit account. Whenever we add to it, it's credit. Whenever we take from it, it's debit. So it's reduced by being debit and increased by being credit. 